can't only make him do it. Oh, not worth it. I would. Not worth the trouble. Joe, where's the iron? What number does it go on? Oh, it's quicker to do it myself. Relax. You know what kids are. You've told the police. What more can you do? Well, it doesn't stop me worrying, does it? Of course it doesn't. I know that. Where's Dan? Dan? Oh, he's, um, out working. Well, this time of night. Moonlighting. Him and some of his mates doing up a flat. Work all night, every night. Half past seven, he left. Half seven? See you at nine, Mummy. He said nine. You call the club? No, they're not on the phone. Ah, oh, the police would have gone round there. In like the club? Oh, yeah. Football and judo, you know. Girls? Oh, a bit young for going off with one of them, isn't he? <laughs> Got that to look forward to. Yeah. Want another cup of tea? Oh, don't mind if I do. Let me do it. Oh, OK. How is Ben? I've not seen him for months. He's all right. I don't understand men. Running about playing kids' games at his age. Yeah, in the summer, as I'm trying to get the green out of his cricket trousers, I think about the winter. And in the winter, as I'm scraping off the mud. You thank your lucky stars they don't overlap. <laughs> they do. Oh, God, Fran, what's happened to Peter? What's happened to him? Nothing, love. Nothing's happened. If something hadn't happened, he'd be here, wouldn't he? Go home with a couple of other kids. Forgot the time. Not all of them, parents and all. Oh, empty house. Mum and Dad gone out. Been going, pub crawling, bold and dancing. Hey, listen. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. It's coming from out there. You turn off the light, we'll be able to see better. Over there, by the steps. Where? Oh, my God, it's Peter! 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 <gasps> oh, Peter, that what happened? happened? Oh, come oh. inside, love, and tell me all about oh, it. Cut the matter with his face. I don't know, Peter, let's have a... <sighs> oh, my God, Peter, what's happened? Oh. <gasps> Fairly hefty bruising round the left eye. Nasty cut on the forehead, two-inch gash on the chin. Had to stitch those last night. Laceration of the lower lip corresponding to an irregularity in the bottom teeth. Could have been somebody trying to force his mouth shut. Stop him from shouting? Yes, could be. Uh, upper arm badly swollen and bruised. At a guess, I'd say a boot. Had to give him a tetanus jab for that, just as a precaution. Fairly hefty stripe marks across his buttocks. Stick of some kind? Yes, yes, I'd have thought so. No indication of sexual molestation. By the way, Inspector, there's no need to whisper. He'll be out for some time. You sedated him? Yes. As I told the uniform boys last night, he was hysterical. Shock? Possibly. Will we be able to talk to him later on? I don't see why not. One boy or more, or was it a man or... Oh, that's your department, Inspector. I've no idea, honestly. It would have been a waste of time to ask. Is this what he was wearing? I think so. Yes, we will need these for forensics. It's a tough area. You don't say. Right now, Mrs. Reynolds, you called the station at uh, 9.54 p.m. Did I? Yes, so it says. The calls and times are all logged in the book. Oh, well, must be right then. Yes, it must. So, at that time, he was, what, 55 minutes late? Yeah. Quick off the mark, won't you? What's that supposed to mean? Well, boys, they're not the greatest timekeepers. They're not known for their promptness, are they? Pete is. It is? Yes, really. So, 55 minutes after his scheduled return, you were on the blower to us to report him missing. You make it sound... What? Unusual. Yes, it is unusual. Well, it is almost as if you were uh, expected something to go wrong. I was out, wasn't I? Were you? I said so, didn't I? Why do you answer every question with another question, eh? I don't. Do I? Well, you make me nervous. What, me? Yes, you. Water. It might be a hair of the dog. No such luck. Why are you nervous? Because you're the old Bill. 
crossed paths before, have we? No. You said no. It sounded like you meant to say yes. No. So you were telling me where you were last night. I'm not happy when he's out alone at night. I mean, this isn't the greatest place to bring up a kid. How long has he been going to that youth club? This will be his second year. Did he go with a special friend? No. Does he have a special friend? No, not one particular one. Had you any reason to expect trouble? Of course not. I told you that. Well, don't look at me like that. Like what? Like you was measuring me up for a coffin. Get on with your story. It isn't a story. It's the truth. On with it. You won't have to tell Her Royal Highness, will you? Well, we go to a pub where they have amateur striptease, that's all. It's all a giggle. I'll bet. No, honest, really. I mean, some of them live in hope more than everything else. You know, I've seen bigger bristles on men. So you'll be able to give me some names, then? Who of the birds? <laughs> no, the fellas, your mates. Oh, yeah, of course. You must have some theories. What? About who did it? No, not really. Denny, my, uh, you know, the man I live with. Yes? Well, I know he's not over keen on Pete. There's no love lost on either side. Where was he last night? Out. Out where? Drinking with his mates. I had to stay here because one of us has to be here in, on account of me being the caretaker in case of fire or someone forgetting their keys. Well, how did he get back? Not till one o'clock. Do you lose your way? No. Uh, I stopped off somewhere. Oh, I see. Does she have a name and address? On the QT. So when you got back, what? Doc had gone? Panic over, eh? Don't you believe it? It was all my fault, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. Going out like that, leave me to face all this. I've got a mouth like a birdcage. Zookeeper's heel. Hey. Cheers. It's a scratch. A nail job. Hers, was it? Well, I hope it was worth it. I've had worse. Cheers. Is there any question in your mind that Dennis could have done this? No. Well... No, I'm sure he didn't. You're not sure, are you? Not 101% sure? Well, no, I suppose I'm not, but... But why? Why would he have done it? Funny way to talk about your own son. He's not my son. No? No, Joe's old man left her. I'm just a temp in from the agency. A what? I came to mend a burst and I stayed. Are you kidding? Oh, honest, that's how it was. Two years ago. Do you remember? The bad winter. Denny the plumber. That's me. Wipe your joints, mend your boiler. I do all the maintenance in the block. Oh, yeah. Tell me some more about you and the boy. Oh, live and let live. I don't say much to him and he don't say much to me. Do you like kids? Not very much, do you? No. Leave me. Please, go away. Leave me alone. What are we talking about you, Brad, not me? Peter. Oh, it's all right now. Oh, God. You ever hit him? Not really. What does that mean? You wallop him, but he could still walk? Oh, or... you don't have to put words into my mouth, All right, you, you tell me. All right. Maybe I clipped him around the ear a couple of times. Kicked him up the jacksy. It's nothing serious. I don't want to around with him. I don't know how to talk to him unless I have to. Jim, let's have a couple of nights. Any change? <clears throat> Give me a shout when he wakes up, will you? It won't be for some time yet, I'm afraid. He's so cold. An extra blanket on him. Would you? Why not? So, you and the lad are not exactly boys and pals. No. Any reason? I'm not his dad. Not a reason? Yes. Don't get that, do you? Not quite. Explain it to us. Well, well, go on. I'm an outsider, aren't I? An outsider, you've been here some time. Two years, isn't it? That don't change nothing. Ever tried to get close to him? Yes. Oh. I've taken him out, shown him round. Regularly? A few times. Not regularly. He don't enjoy it. Did he say that? Yes. Doesn't enjoy it or doesn't enjoy being with you? A bit of both. You like it here? 
Well, of course I like it. I wouldn't stay if I didn't like it, would I? Where did you meet Mrs. Reynolds? I came to the block, didn't I, to do a job. And now you work here. That's right. You're not here to keep you busy? Oh, you must be joking, lady. Have you had a look round? The landlord's name ought to be Rackman. Wouldn't look too good on stationery. What? You're uh, quite handy with the old dukes, they tell me. Who, me? Mm, you. Who told you that? True or not true? Nah. Strapping lad like you, uh, never take a poke at someone? No. Ever been pulled by the police? Got some form of you? No. Well, well, let's hear about it. As a juvenile, that's all. Tell us. A bit of bother with the police when I was a kid. What sort of bother? Screwing and TDA. Oh, very technical. Like them big shiny motor cars, do you? Yeah, I used to. Three and a half jag, two thirds way to South End. Postal? Yep. And the Academy of Crime. No way. I've been straight ever since I learned my lesson. You were out in the town last night. Oh, look, we've just done that with the other bloke. Yeah, we're going to check it out. You've got no objection, have you? Do you have any idea who did this to Peter? No. Were you surprised? Of course I was surprised. But you're sure you didn't do it? Are you serious? Deadly. Are you accusing me? I'm asking you. Of course I didn't do it. Why should I? A hundred different reasons. Such as what? Well, perhaps he was coming between you and Mrs. Reynolds. Bad mouthing you, cutting down on your trips to the nest, telling tales out of school. There'd be no reason to take a stick to it. Stick? Who said anything about a stick? What do you mean? Who mentioned a stick? I don't know. Well, think. Is it important? Could be vital. You're bloody well trying to trap me. If we wanted to trap you, we would. Now, the stick. Who mentioned a stick? The doc did. You weren't here when the doc was here, were you? She told me. You just said it was the doc. No! She told me that's what he said. Let's do that again. Joe said the doc said it was a stick. Got to be careful, Denny. With people like you around, you're not bloody joking. Go on, on with the story. Um... I forget where I was now. Bloody hell, I could hear the cell door slamming then. Let that be a warning to you. The stick. The dog said something about welts on his bum. Stick marks. Did that cow say I did it? No. Well, Sonny must have put you onto me. It's called a process of elimination. What's that? You work your way through the immediate family, neighbours, people who knew. Look, why don't you ask the little bit? Ask them. Ask him, why don't you? Yes, we will. And if We'll talk to the boy and uh, then decide what to do, yes? What's that for? Uh, quick dash out of the office, show him how it's done and get it all tied up by lunchtime. Well, we can dream, can't we? Oh. Give a spell, lady, yes? Will do, sir. No. No. I promise. I won't tell. I won't tell. Don't. <laughs> Please. Peter, it's all right, love. I'm here. Baby. This is the lady from the police, Pete. Inspector Forbes. She wants to ask you a few questions. Hello, Peter. How are you feeling? Very sleepy. Now, do you want to tell me about it? You know, the sooner we talk, Peter, the sooner we can do something about catching whoever did it. Why not? Oh, come on, Pete. Help a bit. I can't. What do you want to do? Sleep. It's the drugs, you see. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. 
Only tarts make money in bed. Good morning. Is it? Yeah, it's a beauty. I know you. No. Another day, another face. Who are you? Old oh, Bill. Oh, Bill. No, no, no. Fuzz. Lily Law. The police. You what? You heard. Who's he? Bit more of the same. What you want? Little chat. What about? Let's wake up first, shall we? Oh, no more. I've got no clothes on. They're quite safe. I'm an agnostic. What time is it? 11.46. Thursday? No, Friday. What happened to Thursday? I don't know. Rain stop play. Black or white? That coffee. Sorry, no offence intended. Oh, none taken. Strong white. One very strong white. Are you having one? A bit short of cups. Must be one around somewhere. Don't bother, I've had mine. Egg, bacon, double oh, sausage. Don't you mind. Sorry. Oh, Grandma, what big claws you've got. All the better to scratch you with. So you're Charlie. Hmm? Bloody funny name for a flat-chested woman. Well, moderately flat-chested. Look, you wake me up for this. What do you want? How'd you get in? It's unlocked. Careless. Very. What do you remember about last night? Oh, everything. Don't happen to have a ciggy, do you? Ah, uh, sorry, not one of my vices. Oh. Bet you're a treasure around the house. Ah, <laughs> uh, not my scene. So last night, where were you? Drinking. What, pub, club? Lazy cow. Well, the amateur strip joint. That's right. You performing? Ah, oh, you're kidding. Charlie's my name, not my nature. <clears throat> my God. More cuffs than West End Central. I'm very into discipline. Yeah, I believe you. So, you were telling me, last night, who was here? Quiz games. I love games. No, not games, not business. Well, let's try you out for size. Ray Bright, how's he grab you? Pass. Obviously not. Bolson? Don't know his Christian name. They call him Tug. Uh, Denny ring any bells? Oh, ooh, so it was Denny, eh? So he been up to? Nothing as far as I know. You might be able to prove it. Ooh. Met him about, what? 8.30? 9? More time to say goodbye. Oh, he left here, I don't know, about, what? 12.30? Some evening. Tells me he lives in an old boiler. No reason he shouldn't get a change of oil occasionally. Well, that's no reason at all. And uh, he never left you in all that time, eh? Right. You sure? Quite sure. You'd be prepared to swear to that on oath. Could even drum up another witness. Well, somebody else who was here. Right. All the time. All the time. Do you want me to show you how we start No, 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 don't bother. <laughs> Chicken. I'll have the scampi. What? Scampi. Lunch. Oh, I forgot. Why didn't you tell me you'd mended the radiator? What radiator? Mrs. Wadham's. Oh, that? Yes, that. Does it matter? Of course it bloody matters. You made me look all right, Burke. Put the key in, open the lock, let out a bit of steam, shut it again. It's not brain surgery. You could have told me, that's all. I could have. I didn't. I apologise. OK. Oh, God, you stink. I've been working, haven't I? On that bloody boiler. I told him a thousand times... Uh, do you want to... spaghetti or beans? What, is that it? Well, what do you expect after bloody police force straight into right. it? All right, beans. Keep your voice down. Why? There's a police lady in with Pete. Oh, yeah? Well, the one that was here the other day? No, another one. That one's coming back later. Why, do you fancy her? I've seen worse. When? Last night? 
pissed out of your skull, reeking a cheap scent. It's better than sweat. Ugh, <laughs> not much. 28-year-old adolescent. Oh, jealous, are we? Oh, that'll be the day. I think he feels a bit better this morning. You don't know even what I'm on about, do you, pig? Here, open this. Listen. I think someone's told the fuzz that... Police tale that cut down on your love life. Listen, if you want me to go, why don't you say so? Five minutes, that's all it'll take me. There's the door. I'll go. When? Eh? I need to know for the milk. Well, when the law are gone. You're one of their list of suspects, aren't you? Leave me an address, I'm sure they'll find you. For the record, I wouldn't touch your precious son. Not a hair of his precious head, not with a barge pole. No, well, it's not me you have to convince, is it? You cow. Why don't you thump me? A really big one, just there. I mean, that's about all they need. <laughs> Mr. Gupta? Yes? I'm Detective Inspector Ford. I think you may be able to help me. Doubt it. Why is that? One of those feelings. You run a youth club? That's correct. You had a meeting last night? Correct. You have a boy, name of Peter Reynolds. He comes to the club. Correct. What time did he leave? No idea. It's important. Somewhere between half past eight and half past nine. Can you be more specific? What? Accurate. He was supposed to be home at nine. He didn't come home until half eleven. Late? Mr. Gupta, do you think you could be a little more cooperative? Doubt it. Business doesn't seem that good. There's a recession. Perhaps word has reached the police force. I put a panda car with two officers outside that door for a couple of days. Be like a morgue in here within a week. Do you know what I mean? The younger ones are 15. They left at half past eight. Thank you. On his way home last night, Peter was beaten up, very badly beaten up. Have you any idea at all how it could have happened? No. Is he popular? Not popular, not unpopular. Does he get involved in any fights? They want to fight. I tell them fight on the judo mat, in the boxing ring. We cater for both. How long have you been running this club? About six years. It's very public-spirited of you. My way of repaying the British for all the wonderful things they have done for my people. Thank you very much for your help. My pleasure. Is he all right, Doctor? Yes. I was wondering about concussion, but he's OK. Oh, he's got a hard head. Just as well. Take it easy just for the present. I'll drop in again tomorrow. Right. Thank you, Doctor. Want anything to eat? No, thanks. I wouldn't push it too hard if I were you. No, I won't. But obviously, I need some answers. No problems. Yeah, won't collapse them. No, never lost one yet. Thank you, Doc. Peter? Do you want me to stay? Just for a few minutes. Uh, would you mind if I go and get a prescription from the doc? Quick as you can, okay? okay? How's it going now? A bit better, thanks. Do you like that youth club? Nothing more. I've got a son. A few years older than you now. He used to join everything. Youth club, scout, skateboard. It usually lasted long enough for me to buy the uniform. Do you mind if I sit down? Ta. Where do you usually sleep? Up at the back. Ah, oh, one of the perks of being ill, isn't it? Being in Mum's bed. 
Right, let's have another little chat about yesterday, shall we? Just see if you can remember exactly what happened. Did you leave the club on your own? With somebody? Oh, come on, Peter, it must have been one or the other. No need to be frightened. A car. What about a car? Did somebody give you a lift? What sort of car? Do you recognise it? Bet you did. Yeah, he's good at spotting cars. That true. English car, was it? It was a maxi. You sure? A maxi. <clears throat> right. How many people were there in it? One. Just the one. A man? Good boy. Now, you tell me what happened. He hit me. Why? Don't know. Did you say something? <laughs> were you cheeky? Didn't say anything. Where did he take you to hit you? Building site. Said he had something to show me. Then he started to punch me. He punched you? Thumped me, kicked me. Had you seen this man before? Where? Where had you seen him? He lives in the flats. Are you sure? Do you know his name? Who is it, Peter? Now, come off. He won't touch you again. You've got my word on that. He won't be here. His name. Come on. Then we can do something about it. Mr. King. Mr. King. Are you sure? Now, this is very serious, Peter. Do you understand that? This is very serious indeed. It was Mr. King. And why? Why does a 50-year-old bookshop owner suddenly pick on an unknown kid? Do you think it could be sexual? It's possible. Now, you say there's no doubt in the boy's mind as regards King's identity. Not at all. Mr. King, he couldn't be more sure. Mm. Now, the boy, Peter, what's he like as a witness? He's pretty damn scared. Mm. And what about the motor car? No, Maxie, like he said. He'd see it about, though, wouldn't he? Nothing too conclusive in that, true? Yes, but he is scared of him. There's no doubt about that. Anything known about King? Still check it. Doesn't go around beating up old ladies, anything like that. Boys on the beach going past his shop. Might be worth a try? It's an idea. Yeah, I'll give the governor over there a buzz. Uh, meantime, you go check out Mr King. Suss him up. Mm, Want to know why? Mm, well, tell him something. Get his reaction. I've got to be careful. Very. Kick gloves all the time, right? Right. Russell. How can I help? Well, actually, it's Mr. King we'd like to speak to if he's in. Yes, I'll, I'll fetch him. Thank you. Come here. Hello. Someone to see you. Honey. Lovely flat. Yes, we like it. Uh, you have a garage? Yes, round the back. Why? Oh, Rafe, there's two police officers to see you. Oh, dear. That sounds bad. Mrs. King, do you think I could be a nuisance? Do you think I could possibly have a glass of water? Oh, of course. Yeah. Are you sure you wouldn't rather have some tea? Well, wouldn't that be too much trouble? I was going to make some in a minute. Oh, it'd be marvellous. Um, Jimmy, see if you can give Mrs. King a hand, OK? My pleasure. I don't really need it, you know. I'll count the spoons. <laughs> well, fair enough. Neatly done. I have to say that. Not the first time. Didn't look like it. I didn't want your wife to hear. So I gather. Well, how can I help you? Well, Mr King, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Name, Rafe Arthur King, born April the 5th, 1926. Thank you. And where were you last night? What time? Between nine and half eleven. Nine and half eleven. I was here some of the time. I went for a walk. Um... Eleven o'clock, I went to bed and read a book. Why? Can your wife substantiate this? I... not for all of that time, no. She went to the theatre with her sister. I drove them there in the car. Which theatre? Adelphi in the Strand. What time did you get back? Oh, half past eight, something like that. I'd driven around, looked at the river. Can anyone confirm this? I don't think so. May I ask what all this is about? Well, Mr King, certain accusations have been made. Against me? Yes. I think you'd better hang around for a bit, my dear. I believe I'm about to be accused. Accused? Hmm. 
Our lady policeman seems to think I've done something. What? I'm not quite sure. Is this to do with the Reynolds boy? What do you know about that? Nothing, except everyone's talking about it. What happened to him? Someone beat him up, apparently. Well, I hope you're not suggesting it was me. You are. But why? At the moment, we don't know why. But I don't even know him. What exactly am I supposed to have done? Picked him up in your car, driven him somewhere. Where? To a building site, and then beaten him up. Any particular weapon? Fists and a stick. Ah. My old hunting crop. Do these look like fighters' hands? Hello, oh, Peter. It's me again. This is Jimmy. He's a sergeant and he works with me. Peter. I'd like to ask you a couple more questions, all right? Mr. King's car. It's a maxi. Yeah, that's right. You told me. Last night, did you sit in the front or the back? Front. What can you remember about the inside of the car? Like what? Well, imagine I've never seen it. You describe it to me. It's like all cars, two seats at the front. Underneath the dashboard, is it like an open shelf? Yes, under the steering wheel. Was there anything on it? Only the sweets. What sweets? He keeps peppermints in there. Peppermints? Yes, he gave me one as soon as I got in the car. What sort of peppermints? Great big round ones. I'll go and have a look. Anything else? Torch, a spray can of some kind, a AA map, book, duster? Only the peppermints. Where did you go after you left us? For a drive. I didn't stop. I didn't speak to a soul. You said it was finished. All over. It is. I gave you my word. For what it's worth. You'd sooner believe that boy, is that what you're saying? Well, why didn't you tell them? Tell them what? About the books, about your theory. Oh, they're not interested in my theories. I might explain it. Explain why they said it was you. You think? Yes. Ah, oh, perhaps I'll tell them. Too late now. Why? Well, they'll think you invented it, made it up. They've taken the car. That proves they don't believe you. The police, you know, are not like other people. Once you're in their hands... Have you been? I'm only repeating what I hear, what I know. Once your name's on their books, up it pops every time something happens. You're never free of it. You never get a chance to wipe the slate, start again. You never see a policeman without feeling fear, wanting to turn away, turn your back. Well, it was seven years ago, one afternoon, early November, I was on the beat. A woman came up to me with her daughter. Age? The daughter? Mm. Oh, about 15. The mother said that a man in the shop had made improper advances to the daughter. What sort of advances? Oh, I think it was a bit of touching up, actually, sir. Something like that. Go on. Well, the incident, or the alleged incident, had happened some time earlier. Then the mother and daughter met up. The CID went round to the shop, but by this time it was closed. Well, you know what these second-hand bookshops are like? Floor under themselves. You still haven't told us the uh, shop owner's name? No, he doesn't have to. It was King. Mm. Oh. Well, next day they went back round there, talked to Mr. King. Very pleasant man, by all accounts. 
And he denied everything. Absolutely. And his wife supported him. Said she'd been in the shop at the time. Well, was that unusual? According to neighbours, never went near the place. So, uh, what was she doing there? Said she'd gone in to help him out with the bookkeeping. So, what happened? Nothing. By the back down, no charges laid. General feeling was the girl had invented it. Oh, an emotional adolescent. Something like. Who did you believe? Well, I believe the girl's story. But I think he told his wife he was in Stuck and it was all hands to the pump. Funny she didn't supply the alibi this time. True. Is there anything else? Nothing concrete. I've watched the shop and Mr. King over the years, seen him on a couple of occasions chatting up brasses, looking in strip club windows. Who hasn't? You speak for yourself. Well, I don't think he's a punter. I think he's a talker, a looker. Mm. Is that it? Yes, sir. Well, that's uh, been most useful. Thank you, Sergeant. Glad to have been of help, sir. Thank you. Well, interesting? Most. Those old-time coppers worth their weight. People have been saying that since Robert Peel. Probably. Anyway, we know a little bit more about Mr. Rafe King. Well, do we? Fifteen-year-old girls to ten-year-old boys. Bit of a switch, isn't it? Mm. Tell you what. Go see Mrs. King. As you say, she hasn't come up with an alibi this time. Well, maybe there's a reason. Yeah? Right. Some people coming to see the Johnson flat this afternoon. Oh, yeah? What time? Uh, appointments for four. How much are they asking? Oh, I'm not sure. Will you be around? I might be, other great engagements permitting. Oh, yeah? What other engagements are those? I don't know, do I? Not till I look in my diary. Mm. You haven't said any more about your move. No, I haven't, have I? Mm, you will be a twit. Big Ed. Well, who else will put up with what I put up with? No, it hasn't all been like that. There's been some smooth with the rough. Mm, I haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Here, listen. Do you know what the bull said? to the lady zebra. Mm -mm. You take your pyjamas off and I'll show you a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll move Pete back to his own bed tonight. That's more like it. Fancy you trying to drop me in it with the fuzz. Why, well, I thought I'd teach you a lesson. I don't want no ring through my nose. I've told you that. Yeah, you had mentioned it. You'll get yourself into a lot of trouble one day, my girl, mm -hmm. going on like that. Hey, listen, that hurts. <laughs> You've got a bruise in a bit. Who said? Well, it's a well-known fact. You are not with me, it isn't it? Get oh. off, you randy bastard. I've got <laughs> things to do. <laughs> mm. Hey, listen, you had a phone call. Oh, yeah, who from? Uh, Charlie, somebody or other. Oh, yeah, what do you want? Oh, you bastard. <laughs> yes, but lovable with it. <laughs> <laughs> More coffee, Inspector. Oh, no, thank you. I think I'd be a wash. Maybe we ought to talk shop. Why not? Well, as I said, my husband's no, out. that's not why I'm here. One thing's puzzling us, Mrs. King, assuming that the boy's story is not true. It isn't. Well, why of all people in the world do you pick on your husband? I have a theory about that. Well, let's hear it. Any theory is better than no theory at all. Well, some time ago, Mr. Tilly, uh, Dennis, w was up here doing some maintenance work. A leak in the system. The place was open. The boy got in. He stole two books. Quite valuable ones. Very valuable ones. What happened? Oh, we got them back. Did you call in the police? No. Why not? Well, I wanted to, but Rafe wouldn't some strange reason he has a thing about the police sort of phobia well is that so very strange how do you mean well all that business with the girl in the shop you must remember <sighs> I, I didn't realize you knew yes well, I'm afraid when trouble rears up these things have a way of floating to the surface more or less what Rafe said. It was your alibi that scotched it. Why didn't you do the same this time? You make it sound positively criminal. It was. Assuming the worst, how serious could it have been? Indecent assault, something of that nature. How old was the girl? Fifteen, wasn't she? Mrs. King, you seem to have forgotten rather easily, don't you? 
the, the publicity might have been ruinous. In Inspector, I have a confession to make. I've been playing games with you. I'm the second, Mrs. King. Oh. Your alibi provider was the and first, Mrs. King. You didn't know. Not one word. Very clever. Not at all. But you've just told me, in, in all honesty, I would have paid a fortune not to know. Clever by half, isn't it what they call it? Look, Mrs. King, if you feel up to it, I'd still like to talk some more about young Peter. If you told me that Rafe had beaten up a girl, or had hired one to beat him up, publicly I'd deny it. Privately I'd wonder wonder and worry. But there's no way I could believe that he ever hit this boy. No way. It's unthinkable. And believe me, I know every kink in that man's makeup. Every single one. Oh, <laughs> It's not you again. Afraid so. Brought your hand cuffs, have no, you? No, not this time. I'll say one thing for you. You don't give up easy, do you? Actually, it's Peter I've come to talk to. He's in there. Joe's out. Yes, She's I just... What's the matter? Nothing. Why should there be? Why didn't you tell me about those stolen books? What books? The one you took from Mr. King's flat. I only borrowed them. Really? Yeah. What were they about? Do you remember? Of course I do. About the American Civil War. Big interest of yours, is it? Yeah. That way you dreamt up this story about Mr. King? I didn't. Oh, come on, Peter. It's the truth, every word of Listen. it. Listen, he couldn't have been anywhere near you. Why not? Because he was miles away at the time, and there are at least six people who can prove it. Prove it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, listen. You better start talking, or you're going to be in serious trouble. Now, if you talk now, we may be able to stop it before it goes too far. Now, I'm going to ask you for the very last time... What happened two nights ago? And think before you answer. I had a fight. Who with? Some blokes from the club. Skinheads. And they beat you up? Yeah, big uns. About six of them. Well, at least five. And how did you know all that about Mr King's Carl and Maxie, Peppermint, stuff like that? Becky said the garages were on the board in the kitchen. I sometimes go and play in there. And help yourself to his sweets. Why didn't you tell me the truth? Why didn't you tell me those boys had picked on you? Because they said they'd beat me up again if I did. Quee. You're early. So I went to Davenport's auction. Any luck? Yes, some rather interesting 18th century ophthalmology textbooks. Do you know, they used to perform cataract operations in the 1700s without anaesthetic? How fascinating. All right. Oh. What 
What was she like? What? I said, what was she like? What are you talking about? The 15-year-old girl you molested in the shop. Oh. How long have you known? The police lady told me. How kind. She thought I was your ever-loving alibi providing spouse. She doesn't know you very well, does she? Why didn't you tell me? Why should I? Dreamy-eyed adolescent with romantic notions? That's what she was? Yes. I call it ironic in a sick sort of way. What the hell's ironic about it? Well, you grope the girl or whatever you did. I did nothing. Nobody believes her story, or if they do, they can't prove it. And now this cretin downstairs comes up with a story and nobody believes you. What was she like? One of your Rubens-type ladies? Fifteen. What was she doing in the shop? Looking for a reasonably priced second-hand John Dunn. Oh, probably needed it for her O-levels. Oh, oh, my God. And you leapt out from behind the Havelock Ellis's and the Craft Ebbings. Probably ruined the relationship between that girl and her mother. You ever think of that? How many of us are there whose lives are so blameless? How many who've never made one mistake? So it was true. She was a pocket-sized Juno. Short grey skirt, white stockings up to her knees, long dark hair, clean and shining and smelling of shampoo, blouse, breasts like melons... Oh, stop it! ...and eyes like an old whore. <gasps> yes? Speaking? Yes, I remember. Yes, I understand. Well, thank you for calling, Inspector. Your police lady friend. Oh. The Reynolds boy has admitted he made the whole thing up. A load of lies. You're not going to go on saying that, are you? Do you have some tea? Would you mind making it? Indian or China? I'll leave it to you. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, what's the strength of your info? Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, and they're going into the premises when? On the 12th. All right, George, look. I think you'd better come around and we'll have an eyeball to eyeball on this, don't you? Yeah, OK. All right, bye. Now then, uh, you're uh, Gupta, the character who runs the youth club. Is he indeed? Mm. Mm. He's being very cooperative. Ah, good. He's put four names in the frame, all skinheads. Uh, they're being picked up now, so I'll uh, leave them to you, yeah? Mm. <sighs> Haven't got anything special on it, you? No. I never gave you that idea. It's great life if you don't weaken. Oh, great. Great. <laughs>